welcome back to the channel. My name is Seam. Yes, Admiral. And I've been fasting for nearly 48 hours at the moment. If this is your first time here, then your immediate reaction might be something like, <coughs> Are you mentally debilitated? To not eat anything for two days is insane. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I understand it's a natural response, and to be honest, 48 hours and or two days is actually nothing. A few weeks back I had actually a three day fast which was actually more difficult. <coughs> this two day fast is actually a very random and simple one. And the reason I did it was because I was traveling and it was more convenient for me to not eat during this time. <laughs> Which is one of the best things about intermittent fasting. You don't have to eat that crappy airport food or go to a fast food restaurant just so you could stop yourself being hungry. When you become keto adapted, going for days without food is actually so easy. That was easy. And I was thinking like, yeah, why not squeeze in another 48 hour fast before the holidays to really cleanse myself with autophagy. Definitely check out my video about the three day fast, but this one is going to be about my fasting formula where I go through these specific bullet points and principles. What do I do? When do I do it? And how you can apply it as well. Do it! Okay, here's how to survive the first 24 hours. What you want to do is to get into ketosis ASAP and induce autophagy because these things are what will protect your muscles from catabolizing themselves. And they're also going to make it that much easier for you to fast, to not get hungry. That's why the night before you should have a low carb ketogenic dinner. This is going to deplete your liver glycogen faster which will allow you to get into ketosis more rapidly as well. When you wake up the following morning, drink a cup of water with a pinch of sea salt in it. This is going to replenish your electrolytes, it's gonna hydrate your cells and it's also going to reduce cortisol. Because your purpose in the morning should be to keep your stress levels quite low because stress is anti -catotic. Getting enough sleep is also quite important because if you get sleep deprived then your blood sugar levels are gonna be jacked up. For instance on day 2 I was traveling and because of that I had quite a sh night of sleep. I had been fasting for over 30 hours by that time already but my ketones were still quite low at 0.4 millimoles and it showed that if you don't sleep then it immediately has a negative effect on your ketosis. But let's get back to the 24 hour fast. After you drink your water in the morning Wait about 1 to 2 hours before you consume any other non-caloric beverage. You can still drink some more water, but you don't want to cause any caloric stimulation to your gut. There is some, you know, debate about whether or not teas and coffee actually kick you out of a fasted state or not. But you should still wait a little bit before you start consuming these beverages. Green tea, herbal tea and black tea are great, although black tea has more caffeine in it. One of the best things you can drink as much as you'd like during your fasting window is sparkling water. It's gonna keep your hunger levels close to zero. But the problem is that if you drink too much water, then you're also going to, you know, urinate most of it out. That's why you should consume some mineral water or add some extra salt to your regular water so that you could retain the liquids. Losing your electrolytes and minerals is the biggest danger while you're doing fasting. So you might want to ask, should I take a multivitamin or some other supplement? I would say that you don't need to take some supplements during like two to three day fasts, not even a week, because your body actually stores most of its minerals in its bones and other organs. So I wouldn't recommend taking supplements during the two to three day fasts. Now, what about if you start to get the first signs of hunger? It depends on how keto adapted you are, but the reason why you get hungry actually has nothing to do with the food that you ate. You get hungry at a specific moment of the day just because you're expecting to get food. Your body is running on autopilot and it's mostly a habit. You follow this random circadian pattern that you've built into your physiology. Your body goes something like, hey this guy he usually eats breakfast at 11 a.m. and guess what? It's peanut butter jelly time! 
if it's 11 a.m then you're gonna get hungry i tend to not eat any solid food during the day which is why i also get the first signs of hunger only at the dinner starve then but what do you do when you do get hungry well then you can drink some coffee coffee is probably the best appetite suppressants out there but at the same time it can also promote the production of ketone bodies which will put you into ketosis faster and of course there are a lot of polyphenols and other detoxification benefits the thing with black coffee is that it has caffeine in it and it also stimulates the adrenal glands you're gonna pump out more cortisol and this can have a backfire effect on your blood sugar levels so be careful with this you can drink decaf coffee throughout the day without with no problems but don't think that it should be a substitute to water you should still drink water man what about non-caloric sweeteners you should avoid diet sodas or other artificial sweeteners because despite their non-caloric content they can still cause an insulin response you probably skip the diet cokes i don't know another thing that i love about these extended fasts is that you can be more productive you don't have to waste time on cooking food eating or you know the other things that are associated with it i use these extended fasts to blaze through massive amounts of work you know you can do some paperwork some reading some writing whatever your job might be it also makes you think how big of an obsession food is for the society there's food everywhere in the supermarkets in your fridge in the pantry in the train station in your bedroom under your pillow everywhere and i think that intermittent fasting should be a mandatory part of a modern human another thing that will allow you to get into ketosis faster is low intensity steady state activities it can help you to deplete liver glycogen and promote the production of ketones you can do some cardio and then start fasting post-workout but i'm not gonna do it because i'm not trying to burn fat i'm doing fasting just for the autophagy and uh, life extension benefits if however you have a ton of fat to lose then you can do some steady state cardio right now i'm very hungry if you get really hungry then using some apple cider vinegar can also stave off hunger get a glass of warm water add one to two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar and gulp it down there is practically zero calories in apple cider vinegar and it also has some potassium and magnesium in it which is great for electrolytes drinking bone broth isn't ideal because the collagen and the fat they will definitely stop autophagy to be honest the first 24 hours of the fast are the most difficult part kill me i'm here this is because your body is still running on glycogen and it needs some time to keto adapt fully after that you get into deeper states of ketosis and it's gonna get effortless almost so if you make it to your bed if you fall asleep without getting hungry then it's practically over you can already consider the fast as successful <laughs> To be honest, from this point on, it's all downhill because your body will be buzzing with its endogenous ketones. When you wake up at day 2, then you haven't eaten anything for nearly 30 plus hours. You might feel slightly tired, but your mind will be still quite, quite sharp. I experienced quite a lot of mental clarity during that time. Another reason is that the elevated ketone bodies in your blood may lead to the accumulation of acetoacetic acid that produces this mild intoxication that is similar to that of ethanol why do a lot of people fail these extended fasts it's because of social pressures and food signals that are coming from their environment you might think that oh i'm gonna have a three-day fast but your family invites you to an amazing steak dinner or a birthday party with cake we are, we are. <laughs> what you gonna do then of course if you have a lot of discipline and willpower then you're just gonna ignore it no sh but if you don't have that kind of indomitable will then you should avoid those kinds of circumstances because it's gonna set yourself up for failure during day two you can follow the same principles that i mentioned drink sparkling water a few cups of tea a few cups of coffee not too much go for a walk be productive and don't make a big deal out of it because the mental warfare is quite present during that time you want to quit you're gonna tell yourself that ah why is this why we're we doing this eh, i'm just gonna have a little bite here 50 calories for autophagy one to two grams of leucine whatever Bullshit. but you definitely don't want to fall victim to your own traps it's a test a test of your physiological keto adaptation but most importantly it's a test of your mental fortitude Radar! if you do decide to go for day three then 
Go for it. It's actually more beneficial for autophagy. Going to bed day two is a lot more easier and you've probably got used to it. And when you do get to day three, then it doesn't matter that much when you start to break your fast. I have an entire step-by-step -step video about how to break your fast safely, so check it out. But the general idea is that you should first start off with something easily digestible like warm lemon water with some digestive enzymes, then some apple cider vinegar, continue on with some bone broth, something liquid, and your first meal should actually be quite small and low glycemic because having this instant insulin spike will make you crash and burn and it can also lead to some weight gain. Oh, After your first meal, you wait uh, maybe one to two hours and then you can continue on eating your regular diet, whatever that may be. Is the three day fast worth it? Most definitely, I even consider it to be effortless in comparison to the health benefits that you're gonna get. You just go hungry for a few hours, but you do your health this immense service. I actually think that intermittent fasting should be a part of everyday healthy nutritional strategy. The best way to do intermittent fasting is to do it on a ketogenic diet, because the benefits of fasting, they're also going to start kicking in once you get into ketosis and once you start inducing autophagy. When you're on the keto diet, then those things will happen more rapidly. If you want to know how to combine these two, then check out my Keto IF program. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Sim. Stay keto adapted. Stay empowered.